Your presence has been detected and recorded. Thank you. All right, our first speaker, some of you may or may not know him, his name is Joey Gibson. Uh, this man has stepped up to run for U.S. Senate, one of us, a true patriot. I've been to this, with many rallies with this guy, he's a very good guy. Uh, here he is. All right. Hey guys, thanks for coming out here today to stand up for freedom, to stand up for the Second Amendment. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we need. For far too long, the conservatives and the libertarians have been hiding. They've been hiding. They're afraid because the cultural war that we're going through right now is out of control and is blanketing it with lies. And the time is now. It is not next year. It is not next week. It is now. It is today. We have to begin to make a choice. We got to make a choice, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to participate on the field or do you want to watch from the sideline? Because this is a this is a huge cultural war that we're going through, and they're they're kicking our asses, guys. They're kicking our asses. They got the media, okay? The mainstream media. They got the schools, the professors, the colleges. They got the teachers in the schools, the social media. They got everything. And this whole time we've been sitting in our houses, keeping our mouths shut, keeping our mouths shut, because of how mean they can be, how rude they can be, how much they can judge you for standing up for freedom, for standing up for God. Oh, hey, I'll tell you this, okay? Last year, I go out on the streets and I declare that God is real. And I declare that freedom is one of the most important things that we have in this country. And there was a lot of pushback. A lot of pushback from not just Antifa, but from the media, from politicians, Nancy Pelosi, the local mayors, the city council members. They don't want you to be thinking about freedom. They don't want you to be thinking about God. They want you to think about your skin color, your gender, your sexuality, anything anything other than what is inside here and this is the key man we got to begin to look inside and we got to begin to grow spiritually if we rely on this world too much to take back washington we're not going to be able to do it we have to be able to look to find something bigger and stronger than ourselves than anything that we know here's what i believe i believe that these rights that we have and freedom okay they don't come from this government they don't come from this world, they don't come from people, they don't even come from the Constitution, it comes from God. It comes from God. The, the right to be free, as long as you don't hurt anybody else, that's the country that I believe God wants for us to have. And at the, the, the essence of freedom, at the, uh, the foundation of freedom, okay, the spirit of freedom, right in the middle of that is the right to protect freedom. And in this country, and in this world, the way that we protect our country is we do it with the Second Amendment. We do it with the firearms. And for far too long in the history of this world, we've allowed other people to take away our God-given rights. We just give them up. Time after time, empire after empire, we just give up our weapons. We just bend a knee. Okay, you look at Hitler, Mao, Stalin, go back to the Roman Empire. We continue to give it up to other people. God gave us this right. This is a right towards freedom, a right to protect your country, and we continue to give it up. Here's what's crazy to me, the brainwashing in this country. Is it crazy? What the hell happened to the activist community in this country to the point where they're literally marching to give up their own rights? What the hell? How did that happen? Did anyone else notice that? I mean, you, you go back at the activist community, you know, I looked into it, I'm an activist. And it's very interesting that now these activists, these days, they're doing everything they can to get a bigger government. They're doing everything they can to take away your rights, take away your freedoms, take away your liberties, all in the name of, you know, social justice or your skin color. You look at Black Lives Matter and these other things, okay? But here's the thing. I believe in my heart, okay, that one of the most important weapons that we can have in this country is without a doubt the rifle. It's the safest gun you can have. Statistically, you're talking about 300 people per year that are murdered, right? But here's the thing about the rifle that we don't hear about enough, okay? The rifle is the thing, 
that keeps us the most powerful military in the world. You take our military away, just the rifles in this country, we have millions and millions and millions of citizens who stocked up on ammo who will not allow any foreign ground troops to take one step on this country. In World Woo! War II, that's right. In Woo! War, hey, thanks. In World War II, I talk about this all the time. I'm Japanese. Um, a lot of people, I kind of say that a lot because apparently I'm a white supremacist, but I'm Japanese, okay? Um, and so this is what I talk about. My family talks about this, okay? And, and when the, the Japanese, the military, they crossed the sea, they went over to China, and the military, the government failed to protect their people. They failed. And the people were left with no guns. No, these men were unable to protect their women, protect their children, protect their households. So the Japanese soldiers went through the land, they raped and murdered the women, the children. It's one of the saddest things. This is the thing. This is why this is very important, guys. We can never, ever allow that to happen in our country. We will never give up our rifle. We will never allow any foreign ground troops to come onto our land and to rape and murder our women, our children. We will protect this land. We will protect our households. We will protect this country with our own blood if we have to, but that means we gotta do everything within our power to stand up for your right to own and carry a semi-automatic rifle. It needs, to be in, it needs to be in every single household. This is why when I'm running this year, a lot of things I'm gonna be saying is kind of different, it's unique. I am going to be encouraging every single household to have a rifle. Stock up on as much ammo that your family can afford. We're talking about deterring millions and millions of people dying from genocide. We're talking about stopping people like Hitler, okay? I'm sorry, God bless their souls, of the 300 people who die every single year from the rifle. But I'm willing to take that to save millions and millions and millions. And I will say this last thing, okay? Is it just me, or does it seem like the whole, the, the, uh, the way that the media and the left focuses on the gun deaths, it seems kind of racist. Because you get 15 kids, God bless their souls, that die in Florida who are white, okay? And the whole country wants to burn it down. They want to like take away all our guns. But yet we have thousands and thousands of black children dying in the streets and no one says a damn thing about it. It's one of the most pathetic things. It is a disgrace, a disgrace to our country. And these single black mothers living in these areas that have so much gun control, they can't even protect their household. They can't even protect their household. And so the criminals are running around taking full advantage of all the victims, okay? So I'll finish up with this. I'll finish up with this, okay? I'm making a call that we begin to take down this empire above us peacefully, nonviolently, but at what point do we say enough is enough? At what point, guys? Every single year, they take more, more rights. They pass more laws, more taxes, more regulations. It's incremental, it's incremental. But at what point do we come together and we unite this country? We unite the conservatives, the libertarians, unite the moderate left who are, for, who are for your right to own and carry a gun. At what point are we gonna have this revolution that needs to happen in the Pacific Northwest and we, be, we can become a symbol for the rest of the country? People see Washington as a lost cause. I hear it all the time, I go all over the country and they kinda laugh at Washington. Imagine this, this is what I envision, imagine this. Imagine we take Washington and when people think about Washington, they don't think about rain, they don't think about the Seahawks, they don't think about Seattle. They think liberty. They think freedom. Because I want Washington to be the most freest state in this country and to be a lighthouse, a beacon of hope, a beacon of light for the rest of the country. So we can go back. We can take the power away from the people at the top and give it back to the American people exactly where it belongs. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having me here today. I appreciate it.